Hi everyone, I'm here today to share what I hope to read in January. I have found in the past year that making monthly TBRs definitely helps me stay focused. I can plan ahead and then just kind of work my way through my ambitious stacks. Whether or not I complete them is a different story. It means that I don't spend so much time wondering what I'm going to read in between books and it's something that I can do at work. like daydream about what I'm going to read in the following month. Um, and I, I have fun with it. So I'm going to keep doing it this year, hopefully every month. And this is me sharing what I plan to read in January. It's a stupidly ambitious stack. I don't think I'll be able to read them all, but I'm going to try. I really want to read all these books. So I'm going to do my best to, to, to make this happen. So the first things that I would like to read in January, not necessarily chronologically, but in terms of this list. The first things on this list are Saga Volumes 1 through 3. These are going to be rereads. I'm not counting them toward my goal of rereading 12 books this year, which is one of my 2023 goals. Uh, technically, they are rereads, Volumes 1 through 9, but that seems like cheating to count that as 9 of the 12 books I want to reread. But maybe I'll feel differently at the end of the year when I that maybe haven't achieved that goal. But the reason I want to reread Saga is that volume 10 recently came out, Saga is back, and I don't, I mean, I don't know when volume 11 is going to come out, but I want to get back to this universe and reorient myself with it before I read volume 10. So I don't want to read all of the volumes in one month. I think that is too much, but sprinkling them throughout the months until I catch up and I'm ready to, to jump back into volume 10 is my plan. And I think three volumes in a month is not unreasonable. If you're not super familiar with the comics world, and if you weren't on booktube back in like 2013, 2014, when this was huge, this is what the first volume of Saga looks like. It is by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. It is a sci-fi series about these two characters who are from warring, not planets. One is a moon, one is a planet. Um, they And they fall in love. And it's about them being on the run. They have a baby together, which is supposed to be impossible. So it's about defying the odds. It's very political, but it's also high stakes. There's action. There's, you know, very cute characters. There's graphic violence, sex, all kinds of stuff. It's just a really incredible series. It is truly a saga. Um, and I want to be back in this world and to fall back in love with it because I haven't read any saga since 2019 when volume nine came out. So these are the first three books I plan on reading. I'm going to talk about the arcs that I have that I really want to read this month before I forget them. Some of them are books that have already come out that I just missed the boat on that I want to catch up on. And some of these have yet to be released. And I know varying things about them. Like for instance, Tread of Angels, it's out. I don't know what it's about, but it's by Rebecca Roanhorse. So I want to read it, but I intentionally did not really look into what it was about because I just wanted to go in not knowing anything. I also may or may not read Stay True by Hua Su, which is a memoir about his friend in college who I think passed away. And it's just about like young friendship, coming of age, and grief, and it, I heard it was a really great memoir, so I would like to read that as well. I want to read Legends and Lattes, which has already come out, but I still have an arc of it that I want to get to, which is supposed to be like a cozy fantasy, sort of like Becky Chambers, but for high fantasy. And it is about a barbarian orc, I think, who decides that she's fed up with the adventuring, marauding life and just wants to open a coffee shop. And I think that there is some conflict there, but generally she's just trying to introduce this fantasy world to coffee. And I heard it's really good. So I want to read that. Um, I do have the Keeper Six, a finished copy of this, which comes out this month, which is a fantasy novella by Kate Elliott. It is about a, an older woman who is trying to find her son. You never stop worrying about your kids, even when they're adults. Kate Elliott's action-packed The Keeper Six features a world-hopping badass spell-slinging mother who sets out to rescue her kidnapped son from a dragon lord with everything to lose. So I just thought that this would be fun. I haven't read Kate Elliott before, but I'm intrigued. So I thought I would give this one a go. Two books I know for sure that I talked about in my most anticipated releases for January to March are Bad Cree by Jessica Johns and Liar Dreamer Thief by 
and Maria Dong. Oh, and also The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett, which came out in the UK, but hasn't been released in the States yet. So Bad Cree is indigenous horror about a woman investigating the death of her sister. And she's also having really weird dreams involving bird skulls, I think. Um, Liar, Dreamer, Thief is about a woman who is obsessed with her coworker and then finds out that he knows that she's obsessed with him. Um, and I think it's going to get bonkers off the wall, but I'm not entirely sure. But it sounds like interesting psychological almost thriller but hopefully with a literary edge and then the twyford code is a unique mystery story about a reclusive children's author who wrote a bunch of like codes and clues into her books and someone trying to crack that code when they discover a like unreleased manuscript first or something along those lines um those all sound really fun hopefully i will get through them and if i don't enjoy them hopefully i can dnf them and embrace the dnf which is one of my goals for 2023 not reading things that i'm not enjoying no matter how far i am into them uh, it's the thing that mercedes is very good at and and i want to do that myself and now we're finally on to the stack of physical books that i own because i am trying to also decrease my tbr i mean i know i mentioned some other physical things but this is the main stack here of physical things i want to read off my tbr two things are not included which are books that mercedes chose for me i will be re vlogging my reading experience of those throughout the month those are priorities i will definitely be reading those books but i also don't want to spoil the surprise on what she chose for me so i'm not gonna say what those books are but those i'm gonna prioritize over some of these other things if I don't feel like I have enough time, which like I probably don't, frankly, but we're going to do our best. So uh, what I plan on reading today as I'm filming this, it is New Year's Day. I would like to read 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hamp, which is a collection of essays written back and forth between her and a bookseller in London and a friendship that they form, even though they never meet. I know that Sarah from Hardcover Hearts does a thing every year where you read 84 Char Charing Cross Road on January 1st, which is why I would like to read it today. I don't know if I'm going to get to it, but I would like to. It's very short, so I just need to dedicate, you know, a solid hour, hour and a half to this book, which I will make time for. I'm going to say that right now. I'm just, I'm going to do it. Um, and this is nonfiction and I've owned it for a long time. So it's checking a lot of my boxes. Another book from my last chance TBR shelf is Ghosts of the Tsunami, Death and Life in Japan's Disaster Zone by Richard Lloyd Perry, which came out several years ago and focuses on the aftermath of the uh, triple disaster that happened in Japan on March 11th. 2011, I think, was when a huge earthquake hit. It caused a huge tidal wave that also caused a nuclear meltdown in Fukushima. And this is about Japanese death and grieving culture and like ghost folklore mythology, I think, um, especially concerning the aftermath of this event. And I've wanted to read it since it came out, which was in... 2017. So I, I really want to read this. I hope it's good. I heard great things about it. Jen Campbell, I know, loved it back in 2017. So here's hoping I get to this one as well. I made a whole list of last chance books. If you haven't caught that video, it's a TBR of things I have to read this year or they're leaving my house. Uh, my book club book for this month is Women Talking by Miriam Taves. I, first of all, really want to read Miriam Taves. I have not yet. And secondly, the movie came out this year uh in january or december or something it's out i think and i want to read the book and then hopefully see the movie and that's pretty much it so uh that's why i want to read women talking that's also a priority for this month and then two books that i acquired relatively recently that i don't want to be like sitting on my shelf forever one i just bought in december it is a nuclear family by joseph han which is about a korean american family living in hawaii and their son i think ends up accidentally wandering into the demilitarized zone between north and south korea and it causes like a political scandal uh sorry if you could hear my dishwasher by the way uh most of my apartment is one big room so living room dining room kitchen are all together so the dishwasher is running i'm sorry about that um i don't know much more about that other than i think that it maybe has ghosts as well yes nobody knows that jacob has been possessed by the ghost of his last grandfather oh i don't want to know more than that um I, I remember hearing about this when i did um i was looking through npr's book concierge and this really caught my eye um and i wanted to read it ever since i got the 50 percent off hardcover at the the sale they had after christmas at barnes noble so i don't want this to wait too long on my shelves and then finally 
I have Sirens and Muses by Antonia Angris, which I've heard so many wonderful things about. I know it's on people's best books of the year list and it's supposed to be like the secret history no, it's supposed to be the goldfinch meets writers and lovers and I'm, I'm hoping I really enjoy it I think it'll be a really great character focused campus novel at least that's my impression So here's hoping I love this as well And that is everything that I hope to read in January I don't think I'll be able to do it all But that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna try and I'm gonna start by reading 84 Charing Cross Road So let me know your thoughts on any of these books if you have read them what you thought about them if you now want to read them based on my vague descriptions and what you would recommend to me i'm always open to recommendations as well let's have a chat down in the comments if you want to join in on my january book club pick which is women talking you can join my patreon for five dollars a month you can join the book club my husband and i have been making a lot of videos over there it's been really fun we do a book club chat about you know 20 25 minutes discussing the books that we've read and I got him to do some end of year content with me, including um, us talking about our favorite movies that we watched this year and his favorite books of the year. Um, I've also been doing other fun end of the year content stuff. I tier ranked all of the 2022 releases I read. Uh, that was really fun. You know, I've been trying to do more experimental stuff. Any of that sounds interesting to you. You can join the book club for $5 and you can join what I think you call Callie's favorites um, if you wanna see those extra non book club related videos for seven dollars a month um and you could just join for one month watch all the videos and then cancel i don't really care um i just thought that'd be a fun kind of playground for me to make other stuff and it's been fun so you can join that i also have a pango books account where i sell all the books i don't want to own anymore that i've read or decided to unhaul without reading if you ever want to know what i'm unhauling it's us only but it's also been a fun thing for me to do to make a little extra money to pay off my student loans um put them toward the payments i mean obviously they're not covering the payments because my payments are ridiculous but every little bit helps so self promo over i just feel like i gotta shoot my shot if you want to help support me financially you are welcome to do so but even just by watching my videos and commenting and liking like obviously you're supporting me and i'm so grateful for that so thank you so much here's hoping 2023 is a fun year full of amazing reads what if they were all five stars that would be incredible We'll see, we'll find out. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.